Let's go ahead and get started with the webinar. First of all, welcome ASAP's community to our next ASAP's challenge webinar today. When we launched this challenge earlier this year, we made it a priority to really create a dialogue on this multimodal analytics and really build a community in addition to just supporting the contest themselves. And so one of the ways we did this is we created this summer's webinar series and we began it with the kickoff earlier this year. Last month, we provided a town hall and today we're pretty excited about being able to provide this the third uh, webinar in our summer series, which is titled data a fuel for innovation. And so the reason why we called it that is when we talk, you know, with our clients, NIST, I think that the, uh, what, what is really very evident is that this data collection is going to be a really important development tool for the community, not just for this contest. It'll probably outlive the challenge in and of itself. It's going to be a really important factor for, for many years to come. And it's really timely that we're actually doing this uh, webinar right now because we have a couple of people that are on site and they're getting set up. And um, several of us are, are going to be heading out there to conduct the uh, data collection late next week is when it begins. So it's very timely that we are uh, doing this. So again, welcome everybody. And uh, we're excited to have you and, and hope you get something out of this, uh, this webinar today. Next slide. So today we're gonna do a quick introduction to the speakers. There's only a few, so it won't take very long. And the beat of today's discussion is really gonna be around an interview that we're going to do. And we kind of posed what we feel are, you know, some of the top questions that you all might have about this data set and uh, how it's going to be collected and, and really sort of form the foundation of what this data set is going to be and how, it, how it's going to be used. It's not going to be the last um, webinar that we do on data and we probably will have more that will be in more kind of technical detail later. But for now, we feel like this will be a very good foundation for everyone to work from. Once we uh, get through with our Q&A, we're going to take questions from you all. And uh, we prefer for that to be through the chat function. So if you have questions, um, you could hold them for later um, after you hear what we have to say, or you could start sending them now and maybe we'll be able to scroll through and get to them. So. Your choice on that, our preference would be chat. Um, it's a little easier to work with um, virtually than opening up audio here and there. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. Next slide, Kevin. So today's speakers are myself, I am Jeff Rosenblatt with the Lafayette Group, and we are a support contractor, the prime support contractor for our NIST clients. And uh, super excited to be a part of this ASAPS challenge. Um, actually came on board to focus on this challenge for Lafayette Group and for NIST. And um, has it disappointed in terms of its uh, challenge and uh, Challenge is actually an appropriate word for not just what it is, but for working in it. it there's a lot going on. And uh, one point, point of reference, um, an interesting, uh, I guess, <laughs> fun fact of ASAPs is you'll notice that the, the font on the uh, logo that's below on this uh, presentation, where we've moved ASAPs sort of italicized forward. And, um, and when we first presented that, the clients were like, we need to move it more forward, really to show the speed that we're moving towards. And um, I totally get that. And that's why the, is, there is a forward 
an advanced forward lean on our logo. So now you have a fun fact about the program. I'm going to be interviewing uh, my colleague, Kevin O'Shea, who's also from the Lafayette group. And Kevin, maybe you could uh, say a few words about yourself. Hi, guys. Uh, it's nice to be here today. Thanks for the intro, Jeff. Uh, I'm leading up the data collection efforts for the ASAP's challenge here, as well as helping out with some other parts of the program management. Um, I have about 20 plus years or so of work in emergency management and law enforcement, um, doing a lot of planning and exercising and supporting in the improvement of our ability to uh, detect and respond to emergency events um, all the way up from, from the mundane through the terrorist attacks into catastrophic planning. So uh, it's been a lot of fun to, uh, to pull this data set together. Uh, we're really excited to show you um, what we've been working on, and we're even more excited to get out there in a, in a, in a week or so uh, to start filming. So, Jeff, take it away. Great. So now we're just we're going to start the interview process. And uh, I know when I, you know, before I even came on board and on this program, and there are all kinds of very interesting aspects to the ASAPS challenge, but perhaps what was I was most curious about was how would we actually create a location to do this? I mean, a lot of times when you're thinking about data collection or data that's used for analytics, you might be getting from an actual law enforcement agency or from you know actual footage that's that's occurred. And there's all kinds of issues with doing something like that. But how would we go about like selecting a location and like creating an environment? where you could actually do this kind of collection. So Kevin, what, how did you actually approach that? What did you do to, uh, to create this ASAP city? Well, uh, you're moving the slide here. We actually created an ASAP city. So uh, what you're seeing here on the screen is about a, you know, a six, block, six by eight block, um, or six by nine block uh, city that's been created, uh, taking bits and pieces from, from real cities and cobbling them together. And um, this exists uh, in the digital world, it's a completely virtual city. And each of the buildings in there all have identities and all the streets are properly named and all the buildings are properly numbered. Uh, and we have identities as far as what businesses are in each building and what families live in each building. So with this small subset of, of basically we're taking a chunk of a city, uh, we've been able to recreate that you know, in a fair detail. Um, so, Ian, sorry, I'm clicking off the screen here. As I zoom in, you'll see that there's uh, there's areas here where we have, you know, the record shack and a parks and rec building. We have an open air market. Uh, there's a city museum and cafe. So there's, there's definitely a lot of detail that's gone into building this larger city. Um, and those contestants that are, uh, you know, the people that join the challenge will actually be able to give this out in a, a GIS based layer, right? With everything properly labeled and you know, um, in, in the spatial database world with that. So it's really exciting um, to get this level of detail and to have this environment to play within, right? So similar to uh, kind of one of those large video games or what have you, where uh, you kind of have an open area, open place to go, we're trying to make this kind of as broad and, and realistic as possible. Let's see here. So quickly to summarize uh, some of the things we've done here to make this city uh, come alive and be real. Um, we've created uh, a social media world uh, using fake book and chitter. Uh, so we've, we've been able to create hundreds of community posts uh, based on the community that's there, right? We have similar to, you might have a, a community page where you live or a page that the, that the local first responders or emergency uh, public safety might run. Um, and we have hundreds and hundreds of users that are all people that live in this city 
that some, you know, manage the flower shop and other ones work at the donut shop and, and they all have this, this presence online and they're talking about ASAP city and the things that happen in that city. Um, same with our, with our chitter, which would be our fake, our fake Twitter and thousands of posts, both related to what's going on in the world. Uh, and also what's happening in ASAP city. Um, as far as this being a public safety related uh, challenge, ASAP city is also a fairly unlucky place on this, on this planet, right? There's quite a few things that happen here uh, as far as emergency events, that's probably in a greater density than we would find in real life. Uh, so um, ASAP city is not a prime vacation spot for you if you're, if you're risk averse, but uh, for us studying uh, public safety and some of the events, both reported and unreported, this is a really, a really cool place that we've created. Um, there's a lot, as I mentioned, we meant uh, there's social media streams. There's uh, we'll get into the data streams in more detail, but we actually have a portion of this city where there is a good density of surveillance cameras. So we have about six acres of surveillance camera coverage uh, that's going to be covering a section, a chunk of this city, uh, in different buildings and what have you. So it's pretty exciting. Yeah, that's. Uh... I mean, that's a pretty big area, actually, to be doing an exercise like this. But, uh, you know, you talked a little bit about and introduced the, the, the notion of public safety. And, uh, you know, as, as one that is heading there next week, I'm looking forward to that all of those emergency events occurring in such a small, concentrated location. So how are you actually thinking about these events. I mean, how what what did you use to design what kinds of events would be interesting and useful for mm -hmm. kind of future public safety needs and would also kind of lend themselves to the kind of the analytics that we're looking into um, exercising in this contest. Yeah, that's a great question. So, you know, as we were developing kind of the history of ASAPs as we went through this, we knew there were certain public safety events we wanted to see, right? And so if we start saying that we want, you know, if we're very interested or if we want to see different types of violent crime or medical response, um, we approach this with a couple of different frames. And one, one of them was, you know, what's realistic. And as I mentioned earlier on, um, what's realistic may not have been the density that we would need in order to run this challenge. So we took a little bit of a different tact in that we went out and spoke to the different communities that were involved, the public safety community, uh, the public, uh, the, those that would be interested in actually um, being a contestant on this and then also different experts across the various fields of video analytics and natural language processing and things of that nature to say what would be interesting problems for you guys it's the cutting edge in your field and we tried to build um, events based on particular evidence that they would be interested in so when we got down to kind of all said and done at the end of the day we were able to develop a list of evidence items um, that are components of events and we were able to get a pretty good idea about those evidence items that folks were interested in and be able to build out a model of both uh, of events across the city uh, both virtual and those that are virtual but also may have a video component right um, so something caught on video to give a to give a density that that sort of that provides our scoring engines and and the and the mathematicians enough to work with to be able to, to score the AI algorithms correctly and uh, and provide some stratification across contestants. So there was uh you know we want it still in a lot of ways does reflect realism um, on the types of events you might see. Uh, but it also is is possibly a bit denser than you would find in real life. So I've been talking about these terms, evidence and events. So 
Um, evidence items we have are, are things that are more finite. So we can have objects, we can have actions, and we can have behaviors, right? So we might have gun as an object, and we might have falling being um, uh, an, an action, right? And then there's certain behavior-based ones, uh, like providing aid, uh, that are obviously made up of other component evident I evidence items, that, but we're not specifying that specifically. So we understand that there's gonna be some difference and some challenge uh, applied um, to being able to discern behavior based, which might be a little bit more difficult than say determining, um, you know, the presence of a gun or the presence of blood. But each of these different evidence items will, will help contribute towards being able to identify an event, right? So if we have blood and a gun and someone falling and whatnot, we, we might be able to put those evidence items together and say, hey, they're all related to a shooting. Right? If we uh, uh, have smoke, it's, it's probably related to smoke, right? <laughs> to finding smoke. So some of, the, some of the events are a little easier than others to, to discern. And I think that that's what's really cool is that it's, it's not flat, right? None of, none of what we're creating here is flat. We're creating uh, different levels of complexity and richness um, across all the different data streams, the video, the text, the language, the speech, the audio, um, that are really going to provide that, that interestingness and that richness um, that we want to see on the events. Uh, this is what kind of we just gave a little graphic here to show you that this is kind of what is expected across, you know, this, this eight hour data set that we're creating, creating a continuous eight hours of data. So, there is stuff happening all over the city all day long of people calling one reporting stuff uh officers and, and medics responding and fire department responding and uh, people flagging down officers and telling them about problems and we're catching things on on surveillance uh of different events that may or may not get reported right because we we are we are very um in the criminology world, we're very aware that a lot of violent crime goes unreported, right? Particularly with uh, certain, uh, you know, disadvantaged populations, the homeless and, and being a good example, right? A lot of crime within the homeless communities goes unreported. So we want to we want to kind of be able to to take that in as a challenge as part of the challenge, right? Um, so here's a quick overview of our uh, of our data streams. As I've mentioned, we have video. Right now, we have 29 uh, CCTV cameras are going to be up recording uh, different parts of this ASAP city. We have a whole bunch of 911 calls, uh, a lot of sensor uh, data coming in. It's primarily the gunshot detection. Um, we do have some other sensor data that would come in, but it would it's going to get consumed by the CAD, the computer-aided dispatch. Uh, so we might have... Um, like if you had a life alert bracelet or something like that, where if you hit that bracelet, that's technically, or if you fell down and it recorded a fall, that's technically a sensor. But what's happening is, is that's going to a, um, to like a monitoring agency that then would call the dispatch and it'd get entered in that way. So we're going to be accounting for those things, although there may not be an API in a particular sensor stream for that. But we believe there's going to be for the gunshot detector. And then we have social media. And as I mentioned, we have the computer-aided dispatch, and that's what the, the 911 operator and the dispatchers would be filling out, which provides kind of the up-to-the-minute um, repository of what public safety knows about an event, right? So a lot of good uh, info on here. Y you all in the challenge community probably are getting a lot more out of this than I can, uh, than I can speak to, particularly as it comes to the, to the stream type and how we're doing the APIs. Um, I know that there's additional webinars coming in the future that's going to provide more detail on, on the data streams and, and the data formats and how you connect and things of that nature. Um, and I'm, I'm in the knuckle dragger uh, category here where we're creating, creating the fun environment that uh, you guys will get to play in. Um, so I think, so we have through fire alarm, so this is a progressive build here. So this is what we might have uh, is across the city. We might have, you know, an accident in one area 
There might be social media reports. There might be people calling 911. We might catch it on video. Uh, this is similar to a fight. Maybe there's some folks that are going to catch a catch a video of the fight and and post it to their to their neighborhood group, being like, "This is ridiculous! Like, I can't believe they're having fights in the middle of the day." Whatever it might be, right? Um, and all this, this is going to just continue to progress all day long across the city uh, with all different types of events. Back to you, Jeff. Great. Great. So I, I would like to offer the uh, the listeners um, one observation. It, it's incredible the level of detail that has gone into designing all of these events, and and not just in terms of a script of what a, an array of like over a hundred actors and and professionals will be acting out over you know the several days where this collection is going, but also really describing it, how we're going to collect that information from all of these different streams of data and modalities of data. And at the end of the day, one of the unique aspects of this contest that we hope to challenge you all with is that multimodal data aspect. Mm -hmm. Before we get into like all of that, and I think maybe the best way to start digging into that a little bit is let's take pick on like one by one or, or, or a group of them. So the um, the one area that's perhaps the most studied modality is is in the video side. And again, this isn't just a video um, analytic contest, but that is a a, a prominent part of this study. So, Kevin, maybe you could uh, talk a little bit about the video stream and how we've incorporated that into, you know, the design of this city and how we're going to be able to capture that video. Yeah, that's great, Jeff. So, uh, and good point on the, on the, the complexity with the actors and whatnot. We definitely um, we're very proud of that, right? Of being able to get. Um, uh, a lot of the people and props and staging everything we need to make it look real. Um, so we're back to the original picture of our ASAP city. And um, I would have loved to find some city in the US that would let me take over, uh, you know, eight to nine square blocks um, and be able to run uh, video for five or six days. That would be fantastic. We weren't able to do that. What we were able to do was to find a training facility um that had some good buildings that we could use and good good grounds and locations and what you're seeing on this map here is the buildings that are in blue are actually exist real life right so there's a location that we're using out in indiana and we're that has the same configuration of those buildings and those buildings are stuck into our asap city in the same orientation as they exist in real life and so i'm just giving you a little zoom in on the blue um so as we have these buildings this is what our camera coverage map looks like across those very same buildings right so if i just and toggle back and forth again you see the blue buildings and then we toggle to here and we have our camera coverage there is some overlap on cameras so i want to i want to be clear i mentioned six acres at six acres of coverage it's maybe not six acres of actual land on the ground that's covered because there's some camera overlap but it should be a really good uh representation of a city and you know we're we're being very careful about our field of views to make sure that um they're not uh, uh that they're not going to be too broad and picking up picking up information that that it, it should not pick up, right? If there's a building supposed to be in some of that infill, uh, we're paying very special mind to that. So um, again, I really like our approach. We've been able to, to create a dense cityscape uh, with a lot going on, um, but being able to also then overlay our, our ability to get some of this filming done in a realistic manner um, that we would not have been able to do really any other way right other you know short of taking over part of a city for for a couple of days great yeah i've seen some of those uh 
Well, the whole camera design process was fascinating to watch on how that actually is occurring. So, so we talked about the multimodal aspect of this. And also, it's important to note that the, the PNS in ASAPs is for public safety. And as we know, public safety has very traditional sources of information beyond just, um, you know, videos, and cameras, CCTV. So how are you incorporating some of these other data sources like 911, audio, and I, I know you mentioned earlier computer-aided dispatch. How mm -hmm. is that part of this? So what we've been doing for 911, dispatch audio and CAD, um, so I can just again take you, pull pull the covers back here a little bit and show you what was what what's been going on in development, right? So um, one of the problems we had was trying to develop scripts for 911, right? And then working with our natural language processing experts, um, it was a challenge, right? How do how do you script how do you script kind of spontaneous talk? And what we decided to do was to not script our 911 calls but to instead uh, either show the person, show the caller a video or a picture of, of the event. Um, and obviously for the ones that we're able to record in real life, we'll show them a, a, a video of that recording. And we're gonna, and we anticipate, we're gonna be getting that lovely, amazing natural variability that we wouldn't get if it was fully scripted. Right. If it was fully scripted, I probably wouldn't be making mistakes as to the color of the person's shirt um, when I was scripting it or mis, you know, um, mistakenly writing avenue instead of street. But all that stuff happens in real life when people are 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 trying to articulate what they're seeing um, to a 911 dispatcher. So we think that that's going to provide um, a lot of realism and a lot of richness for folks working with that audio data to really, um, you know, to really work with and get some really interesting uh, research done there to see how that those 911 calls kind of relate to the other events that may be going on throughout the city. Um, we have real life 911 call takers that's that's actually an area that that lgi specializes in as lgi does uh Lafayette group does a lot of support to the public safety communications world right so a lot of our uh, a lot of our support is to 911 call takers and dispatchers and so we've been able to get a few of the ones folks that we have on staff to, that are actual 911 call takers to be uh, the ones taking a call, and I think it makes it that makes a huge difference as well, because that would be very hard to script. Um, CAD data, uh, what we call CAD data, is computer aided dispatch, and so those would be the notes basically that the the nine one one call taker or the first uh, responder dispatcher, where they would be making a lot of their entries and and kind of dispatching folks, and we have. We have a you know a lot a pretty good plan out for for how that works. A lot of a lot of agencies we're seeing out there right now in the real world are using computer aided dispatch for uh, you know signing on to a scene, signing off, um, you know clearing a scene. So a lot of that will come through uh, computer aided dispatch um, as opposed to being an over the radio call. As and we're kind of replicating that on real life. So there'll be a mixture of over the radio calls for conversations back and forth with first responders and dispatchers, and a combination of that with uh, with some of the computer aided dispatch automatic things. So I also have uh, a sample 911 call. So we did some bench testing. So this is not one that we would expect to find in the uh, in the data set and. Uh, we obviously have some tweaking to do, but I thought it would be good for you all to hear one of the data, one of the uh, one of the nine one calls. Nine one one, what's your emergency? Hi, I'm at two hundred one North Third and a Half Avenue. And what's your name, sir? My name is Al McCabe. And what number are you calling me from in case we get disconnected? Um, this is my cell phone. It's 812-842-2596. And what's your emergency? 
Um, just observed a, a vehicle crash. Car ran off a bridge here. I think there may be a woman trapped inside of it. Okay, sir. And about how far um, did the vehicle travel off of the bridge? Oh, probably 50, 75 feet, not very far off the roadway. On its wheels, or did it roll? No, yeah, it rolled. It's on its hood, on the on the roof. And are we going to need high angle rescue equipment to get to it then? Um, it's down at an embankment. You you may need it in order to pull somebody up safely. Um, I I really couldn't say. Okay, can you tell if anyone is injured? I I think there's a woman still inside of it. I, I saw her go by. I was just walking here, and there was a woman driver, and I, I haven't seen her get out. Okay, what kind of vehicle is it? Um, it's a little silver sedan. Do you see a license plate from where you're at? Nope, I, I didn't notice it when it went by either. We do have help on the way. If you find out any further information, I want you to give us a call right back, okay? Okay. We've got calls on this, so we do have help on the way. Okay, thank you. Thank you. There we go. So kind of cool little bench test we did with uh, with one of our 911 operators. And uh, obviously there's some tweaking that we need to do with, uh, you know, possibly background noise and whatnot for the caller, but we're we're getting there. Pretty fun stuff, Jeff. Yeah, it's, it's always kind of really cool to see or hear the data, the data as it exists and that is as it is being created. Mm -hmm. There's going to be a lot more of that going on next week. Mm -hmm. So, so now we kind of went. We we talked about some of the traditional public safety uh, data. We talked about the you know the video collection and you know how that's been a very traditional source of, of of surveillance but social media is is becoming a very prominent aspect of not just our culture but really of the public safety community mm -hmm. and how are you you know you touched on it earlier but maybe you could give us kind of a little clearer view of how you plan to incorporate social media data into this contest? Yeah, absolutely. So it's really interesting from the public safety side of the house. Uh, for years, we clamored um, after the ability to get better access to social media data, right? Like we need more access, we need more, we need more data, we need more data. And, and now uh, two things are happening. Obviously, there's privacy concerns, so public safety is less interested um, in collecting data that uh, is person to person. Um, but even the information that is just publicly posted, like we mentioned to the community pages or to the uh, public safety's um, social media presence itself, some of the volume of that is getting large enough now to where it's becoming, um, it, it's becoming to the point that you can't you can't do any sort of analysis on it by hand. So that's where we're really excited for the kind of the AI community to to make some strides here. And I know that there's some other work that NIST has been doing on this, and we're hoping to to build on on some of that great work that they've done in social media analysis for for disasters. Um, but what we've gone ahead and done is we've made, uh, as I mentioned before, a fake book and a chitter that uh, that are able to, um, where we've created hundreds of users, right? There's over 300 plus users on the fake book and they've created hundreds of posts relating to different events that are happening in the city, right? So there's a screenshot up there. It's just showing you, this is, um, you know, 3, 3, 1, 6 a.m. the sports radio. So that's, you know, the media presence Excuse me, the media outlets that are in the city also have a have a presence on this fake book and they're reporting stuff um, like a, there's community pages, uh, there's businesses posting um, information. So really it becomes can 
can the contestants really begin to identify um, posts, social media posts, whether it's on either of the two services that we've recreated, and determine if one, if they're in ASAP City, where in ASAP City they are kind of referring to, and is it relevant to anything else that's happening um, somewhere in the city, kind of at, uh, event wise, public safety event wise. So really, really kind of cool the um, kind of the level of detail that we've been we've been able to get out here is to with the hundreds and hundreds of posts, and that everything should be internally consistent to what's actually built within our virtual ASAP city. As that's really cool. It's and it's it's great to kind of overlay this social media aspect into this this contest as a modality. Mm -hmm. And in some ways, it's it's multiple modes in and of itself because, as you mentioned, you've got different different mm -hmm. sources of of uh, social media being generated. Yeah, just just to add in while you're thinking, I you know I I probably neglected to say that we would expect on here to have um, pictures being posted, videos being posted, and so that would be kind of outside of the normal video, you know, quote unquote video data stream. Uh, but there still might be interesting or um, relevant information coming across either those pictures, videos, or or what have you. So yeah, so it ends up being that it's it's interesting. We, we often call like, you know, audio and video and text and we say, oh, social media has its own stream, but really it's the, the, the uniqueness of social media is that it's so mixed with the text. Right. Yeah, it's just, it's so I believe that was the end of the, our, interview we were going to do a kind of a quick um exhibition here of asap city we'll see if it actually um works this is an actual flyover of the location where uh we've got folks on and we're all heading out to in the next week or so and we'll be setting the setting the scenes literally and figuratively for all these different events that are going to occur in asap city it's a real location and we're going to have you know like i said upwards of a hundred actors and public safety professionals that are going to be representing like a day in the life of asap city as as kevin mentioned it's going to be a really big heavy day in terms of emergency events in asap city and that's to make sure that we've got enough richness in the data so that when you uh, are you know exercising your solutions that there's some really good data for you to work with across all these modalities so um so we're really excited to really get to the point of doing this data collection and um and having a real kind of source of information to be able to run contests on and provide to you um, in advance of that next contest so we're going now into the q a portion and i see some people have started to um, send some questions in we're going to spend uh, you know 15 minutes or so and address the questions that you have um, one thing I will mention is, is that we certainly plan to do more of these later and get into more of the kind of the analytics and the AI aspects as we start to design the scoring and testing and um, and the test harness development we're really looking forward to getting your input on that so those some of those answers might come later but we're um we're ready to start um answering questions so let's uh let's get started here kevin there's a question that came in from alexander um is cad paging field data accessible within asap city 
So Alexander, if, uh, if I answer this wrong, just correct me in the chat here. So there is um, what we're what we're doing is there's going to be an API available for the CAD data. Um, and the, the CAD data structure is probably probably one of the more complicated data structures. Um, and so that there's gonna be more details of that released as we as we kind of begin to populate the data warehouse and make that available. Um, but it will be a it will be a stream that's available. So it's not a uh, it's not just housed in house. It is definitely one that's available for the contestants. If I uh, if I didn't answer your question, just shoot shoot me another text. Great, thanks, thanks, Kevin. So there's another question that came in about access to ASAP City for the contest, and um, you know perhaps if they might have missed a previous webinar. No, this is the webinar where we're effectively asap city to you at this point as as we mentioned earlier we've been focused on designing all of these events setting up the the network setting up all of these various devices for generating the modalities uh, the streams that for each of these modalities and we're going to be collecting all of that data um, Kevin had shown the um, that one table earlier, and that describes of the data that we're going to be collecting. So we don't have that data yet, and that will be what we anticipate having um, at the end of this month, at least in raw form. And of course, then we've got to synchronize the data, we've got to curate, curate the data, annotate the data so that it is um, you know, useful for using in a contest. Our plan is to um, make a data set available to you. You can see on the upper left-hand corner of this slide, training data description. We're gonna provide a version of this data for you to have access to and to play around with. And so you can, if you've got software solutions, if you've got algorithms that you want to exercise on this set of data and see how well it performs, we're going to provide this data in advance for you. I believe it's like six months in advance of the actual start of the contest. And so this training data will be very similar to the data that will be used in the contest itself. So our goal is actually to provide to you this data so that you can you know, play around with it, see how things work, but also provide us feedback too. So some of these uh, webinars that we'll be having will be an opportunity for you, once you actually have access to this data, to provide suggestions. Maybe we, you know, it's something that we will incorporate in how we're, we annotate the data, how we um, you know, are building our scoring and evaluation system. So we're looking to do this very collaboratively. Early on, I said, um, and our, our missed clients are, are very adamant that this is a collective effort. We, we really want kind of the, the participants in this community's input on what we're doing um, so that whatever, however we set this up, will be something that will both challenge you and um, enable really good solutions to come from this. So, um, let's see, the last question, was the data to be available then for contest one? No, Con so contest one is an ideation contest and it's going on right now. Um, the the submissions are due for contest one on August 7th. If you, you can check out the website and it will provide the, um, the guidance for that. But um, contest one, we will not have this data um, for contest one, but we will have it, like I had mentioned earlier, six months prior to launching or to accept, to, to kind of opening up contest two. So you'll have ample time to look at the data before we get into the um, analytical portion of the contest. So let's uh, get to another one. Um, what software was used to create ASAP City? 
Um, Kevin, you want to kind of touch on that? I mean, that's sort of the different answers to that question. Yeah, I, it's everything I can answer. So, um, Mika, I think you probably were talking about that flyover that we did at the end. So that was our ArcGIS's city engine. Um, and we'll probably make a, a, a section of that available at, at some point with releasing the, the data and the data sets. Um, more importantly is I'm having um, just a proper ArcGIS kind of base map, uh, you know, vector um, map created with actual measurements and, you know, sort of actually be, you know, fairly realistic as it relates to the orientation and siting of the buildings at Mutsi um, as it uh, as it overlays into ASAP City. So that's under development right now, and we should be able to provide that to folks with that original data set one. Um, we're kicking around, of course, you know, other fun ideas about putting it into a an Unreal Engine or something like that, but um, that's kind of more over the horizon at, at this point. So ArcGIS City Engine was that flyover, and there'll be more of a proper ArcGIS base map um, created. And then I see um, the other question that Nico had, Jeff, as I've just seen here, he had yeah. said, so, um, Will the simulated data streams be provided for participants? And I think you covered that, Jeff, in that we're giving one data set out as a practice data set, like a training data set, like that you can iterate on. And yes, you will be, that's, that is, that is sort of the focus of contest two, is that we're looking for you to create different software programs and algorithms and AI um, that can kind of start to answer the questions at hand um, as, as it pertains to the identification uh and classification of emergency events hey kevin you know they um they, it was an interesting nuance i think to one of uh, miko's questions and um and i think it'd be worthwhile to to, to point out and um, kind of describe this aspect of the data so you know he, he introduces the question on the simulated data streams and so can you provide a, a description of data, the live collection versus the simulated data and mm -hmm. how these will end up being combined and curated together to kind of form as the kind of composite set of data that will be provided to these contestants? Yeah, so the live video um, will be, you know, eight hours continuous of the data set. We have events happening all over the city elsewhere that are coming in, for example, on 911. So if I take 911 as an example, uh, we're going to have three 911 lines, as you would have in, in, in sort of a larger, nine, or, you know, a, a call center for this size city. Um, and so I believe that we're looking to present that kind of in an eight-hour chunk with the different 911 calls coming on, um, you, you know, in real time as they would as they would kind of march along. So if we get multiple calls in at the same time, they'd, they'd be using lines two and three. Um, so in that case, we have the eight hour video that would be released across 29 cameras. We'd have eight hours or so of, uh, of audio that would get released. And then uh, the social media posts and the computer aid dispatch would be a little bit more database based. Um, the big thing is we don't necessarily want you um, in the contest per se. With the training data, we're probably just going to give you all the training data, uh, you know, the practice data set. But in the contest, you're probably only going to be able to get access to particular data after it's released, right? So you can't grab computer aided dispatch for the whole day. Um, you can only grab it for, you know, from now backwards, right? So. Um, that's all getting getting kind of a little bit beyond my expertise into what we're building for the uh, for the test harness and the data warehouse and some of the APIs that are going to be in there as to whether it's a call or a push or a pull um, and how and how we're going to manage that as to what you're going to have access to. But again, real time being a big component of this challenge, the real time aspect, uh, the data set that you'd be given for practice, you'll be given the whole thing, but contest. Two um, is is going to be a little bit more focused on on being able to analyze this stuff kind of in a real time uh, real time manner. 
Yeah, and I think another aspect I, I, I touched on earlier about these, um, the design of all of these events and the rigor that went into them. And, you know, Kevin and the team has, um, you know, first of all, there's a lot of expertise of uh, folks that are designing these events that have actually lived that, that are from public safety. And what they're also doing is these virtual events are being designed in conjunction with these events. So, you know, virtual data will be aligned with actual like live events that are going on so that, you know, when you see the, a video, for example, of something happening, that's just one piece of the puzzle. There could be virtual data that's being created that would really initiate um, evidence occurring about that event about to happen or happening or substantiating certain things that have already happened, you know, within that event. So the virtual data and the live data are actually being designed to create a richer set of an analysis and analytics um, to be exercised for this challenge. Um, so I just want to kind of make that one um, distinction. Um, one quick quest question and answer about the webinar um, being shared. Yes, we are recording this and we will be posting it on the Hero X ASAPs website, which looks like was posted or is um, was responded to on the chat line. So we will have that. Um, one other uh, question was about, do you need to participate in contest one to be in um, ladder contests? The answer to that is no. You, if you didn't um, submit an entry into contest one, that's fine. Um, you can participate in contest two. One of the things that we are uh, also doing as a part of really the kind of the outreach, outreach for this is to uh, facilitate a lot of teaming because there's a lot of uh, aspects to this that may be broader than the depth of your expertise. And so we're trying to provide opportunities through the forum and otherwise to provide um, some, some visibility where you might be able to team up with somebody where your depth and someone else's depth will create the breadth that's needed to uh, have excellent solutions. And one last thing that, you know, we haven't finished this yet, but we are designing the next contest, contest two, so that we will reward people that might have um, a great kind of deep algorithm in a particular area, but not necessarily all the other pieces. Um, so we're not going to just exclusively reward people that have this, the, the end all and be all of a, of a solution for this. So we're gonna have sort of the narrower point um, solutions rewarded as well as the broader set of solutions. And if you look at contest one, the, uh, the, the prize categories were, were designed in that way for that as well. So just something for you guys to, um, to consider. Um, I think we're gonna have to probably wrap up now as we're getting uh, towards the end. I really appreciate you participating in this. And um, we're gonna have others um, coming up. Coming up. I mentioned that this is our summer webinar series, but we also have our next one planned for August 3rd. So not very far from now, um, we're planning to wrap up this data collection effort that we spent a lot of time doing on um, around August 1st. So it will be fresh on our minds that we plan on doing some interesting interviews and perhaps some video recording of things that are happening there to kind of give you a sense of what went happened there. Um, and also August 3rd is just before contest one wraps up. So it's sort of in the, what we actually are labeling this webinar as the final countdown. Um, so that will be our next um, kind of interaction, formal interaction. Beyond that, I'd like to um, point out that the end of September is when we're planning to do the wrap up workshop for this. 
And we're actually planning some pretty cool stuff for that. Um, it's going to be as one might expect these days. We're planning for it to be virtual. So it will be a less heavy lift for people to attend. And we're going to, we're looking to design it to be, you know, hold your attention and be valuable for you and for us to participate. So, you know, keep your eyes out for that. And, you know, one of the, the last thing that I'd, um, you know, sort of like to close out on is that, you know, once we wrap this up, we are, if not, we are already designing the next contest. Um, you know, part of contest two is going to be based on some of the inputs we receive in contest one, but we've already begun designing the scoring regime and, you know, what kind of prize categories we would have, you know, since we've already, you know, we've invested a lot of effort in designing all these events and the modalities that are involved and, you know, how they overlap and how one leads to the other. It's a, it's a fascinating puzzle. And um, you know, we've got a broad team of experts that are involved in this from our organization on the private side and also on the NIST side. You know, we've got folks from the um, PSCR lab from NIST and, um, and our NIST have actually also integrated other experts from within NIST, um, for example, like in the social media side so that we're, you know, working alongside other research going on and um, and so it's kind of a symbiotic relationship with other uh, research. So with that, I uh, appreciate everyone's time and attention for this. I thank Kevin for uh, being my sidekick in doing this and uh, and more importantly, all the work that he's done moving this ball forward. It's just it's really amazing the work that uh, that has been produced already and I'm I'm so looking forward to the the actual data being created um, from this. So thank you very much and we'll see you again uh, next month. Thanks everybody. Take care.